Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Kristen Welker had a weird question for Senator John Fetterman. The NBC News anchor asked him to respond to news that Kamala Harris owns a gun. Welker was seemingly put off by the idea that someone would use a gun to defend themselves, and Fetterman disagreed. Let's watch. I want to ask you about something that Vice President Kamala Harris said this week. Uh, she was talking about gun ownership with Oprah Winfrey. She said, quote, if somebody breaks into my house, they're going to get shot. You, Senator, are a gun owner. As the leader of a party that prides itself on advocating for gun safety, was it responsible for Vice President Harris to make those comments? Uh, absolutely. I think I think the vast majority of Americans, if you had somebody breaking into your house that might be there to, to harm you, you probably have the right to, to, to shoot them. And I think that's a vast, vast majority of Americans would agree with that. It was such an idiotic question that I wonder if, does she realize how stupid it was? Because I mean, he's exactly <laughs> right that the vast, vast majority of Americans yes, think that you, you should, you ought to be able to defend yourself in a situation where where you're attacked in the home or someone enters your home um, against your wishes, that legal, lawful gun ownership is permissible in this country. Many, many Americans, including apparently Kamala Harris, we didn't, I don't know this until recently, maybe she'd mentioned it once, twice before. I'm very curious about what her history is with uh, with firearms and where she is licensed and all that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, of all the, the things that she could be talking about, that probably is something that's kind of relatable um, and, and, and a good thing and something I as a libertarian believe in, you believe in. And for this mainstream media person, Kristen Welker, to think that, but is it is it weird that she would talk about that when, you know, being against gun crimes is so important for Democrats? It was very odd. Very odd. This is one of the few obvious things that most people across the political spectrum would agree is a responsible use yeah. of gun ownership is to protect your property and your family. The fact that someone would have a problem with this, I think, shows how out of touch they are with the average American. And it's one of the few things that I agree with Kamala Harris and John Fetterman on <laughs> is that, yes, if someone tries to come into my home, they're not going to have a good time. Um, on the Kamala Harris gun ownership thing, uh, I did reach out to her campaign. I might have said this last week. Maybe it was on our other show, the purple show. This is the orange show today. <laughs> Um, but I did ask her campaign what kind of gun she owns and if she owns more than one. And sadly, they did not get back to me. I would really like to know. I would like to know, too. I don't, I don't necessarily think she just made it up, but we don't have very many details yeah. about it. Like, and where she doesn't is she, have the best track record on honesty. So. <laughs> where is she licensed to carry? Is she licensed in... The District of Columbia, because it's very difficult, right, to get a gun in the District yeah, of Columbia. So it used to be more difficult. There was a famous Supreme Court case. Heller, which, yeah, changed changed it a bit. So it used to be in D.C. that you had to demonstrate an imminent threat to your life in order yeah. to have a handgun. And then Heller overturned that. So you are able to get one, but it is still more difficult in D.C. than most other localities and states. Um Maybe she has a shotgun. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, again, I want to know. I'm very, very, very curious. Um, and, and yeah, you know, this comes up uh, some every now and then. There's someone, you know, prosecuted for, ju or at least prof briefly prosecuted, or arrested for just, you know, defending themselves on their property. Or you know, we've seen this with footage of uh, there was a famous one in uh, New York of like a convenience store, a bodega owner defending himself against a crazy person. It might not have even been with a gun. It might have been with a knife. And then have them, you know, briefly arrested or prosecuted. The, the right to protect yourself is sometimes under threat um, in this country. Um, and, and I mean, this also comes up in, in rare instances, but it does happen versus the police themselves. A reason we've done a lot of reporting on, you know, like no-knock or wrongful raids. Sometimes the police come to the wrong house, bang down your door in the middle of the night, and there are situations where you reach for a gun thinking you're just being you know, you're being robbed or something, and it's it's the police, which you're, you know, you can't shoot at the police, but you didn't even know because it was the middle of the night and they got the wrong, the wrong house. So I, I think it is important and valuable to assert the right of Americans to own firearms and use them for self-protection. So I'm, I'm 
glad that that's something John Fetterman is about. Uh, the more a, a more reasonable and clear-headed thinker in the Democratic Party. I'm, I'm not sure I would have imagined I was going to be saying that for many years about John Fetterman back in 2022, but he certainly has emerged as the person in the Democratic Party I seem to agree with the most, uh, even while I still have many disagreements with him, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah, he's sort of like the new Kirsten Cinema. Yeah. Um, he said recently that... Love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> he recently said that he believes Republicans and most Americans right now are right to have concerns about what's happening at the southern border and that the Democrats should address that. He's been bucking his party on the Israel-Hamas issue because of the support for the pro-Palestinian protesters who have gone pretty hardcore against Israel, even beyond what the Biden administration has done. In fact, they've been protesting a lot of times in opposition to the Biden administration's policy on Israel. Um, but I'm kind of curious about the timing of Kamala's admission that she is both a gun owner and is happy to use her gun in self-defense because, of course, back in 2019, when she was running for the Democratic nomination for president, she expressed support for mandatory gun buybacks which is not so much a buyback as it is a confiscation. Yeah. Um, she, I guess, doesn't support that anymore. She still supports a ban on quote unquote assault weapons, which is a term so vague as to be practically useless because everyone defines it in a different way. It's not really a real definition of any kind of firearm. So I, I'm curious how she kind of squares what kind of gun she owns with this desire to ban on uh, assault weapons and yeah I, I assume her position is not um i the vice president should be allowed to carry a gun and no one else uh but i hope uh, not that would be maybe the ramifications of the of, we don't even really know what her gun policy is because she has not been grilled on any of these things in a debate with other democrats and she's done very few media interviews and we're all kind of just discovering what her actual policy views are and fetterman was also asked in that interview about her flip-flop on fracking and he's you know he's in a difficult position answering that one because he's for fracking or more so than the rest of the people in his party and uh, just kind of says, well, Republicans are crazy, so, you know, don't pay attention to that flip-flop, which is probably the best kind of answer you can do there. Yeah, it's about the best you can do. It's probably better than Bernie Sanders' tacit admission that Kamala was doing this for yeah. political reasons, which is probably but he's true, right. He was correct. Right? I mean, the fact that she's going out and saying this stuff on guns, and I, she said this in an inter interview with Oprah, I believe, I think suggests that maybe her campaign is a little bit worried about how she's polling in some of these battleground states and is really trying to win the middle as opposed to endearing herself to the progressive right. base like she was. In Which all of that is good. Which it's is, all positive, but the is, question is, is it sincere right, and then is once she, she going actually to, governs? Exactly. Is she going to like? actually hold to all of these new positions when she takes office if she does win the presidency? And I think the jury is, is very much out on that question. More free media in just a minute.